Hey, Teddy here. Um, today, um, I've got a lot of things to talk to you guys today. N now, first off, um, I've got some great news I'd like to give out regarding the casual reviews with Bear Rimshot. Now, in case you guys have not, oh, by you know, um, before I go into detail about what uh, news, let me say this. So far, I already discussed about what's going on with the fate of it, which in this case, I'm still writing the script. I mean, yeah, as you guys can tell, I have a lot of script writing that has to do with the episode that I'm working on right now. Can't say what I'm writing in public, as it would ruin a lot of surprises for you guys. Anyways, I already discussed who's going to be my editor, which in this case is Nicholas Sandra. However, one thing regarding casual re reviews with Bear Set that I did not talk about just yet would be, of course, who is going to be doing the title card for it. Well, um, I did ask my good friend Rachel Greenwald to see whether or not she would like to help me um, do the title card for casual reviews of Bear Shot. What is a public apology? However, unfortunately, Rachel did, however, for some reason, decline. I don't know why, but either way, so yeah. But on a brighter note, um, I did find a new title card artist being from Ardsley this time. And in case if you guys are wondering who will be helping me with the title card for this episode, it's Zoe Solomon. Now, Zoe, if you're watching this, I do apologize for mentioning your real name in the into the public. It's just that well, when I do update vlogs, this is what I have to do. I mean, when I do Teddy's updates, people, there goes you, Zo, um, I, I usually, I'm supposed to talk about what's going on with life, life as a YouTuber, and when I speak about other collaborators, I'm, I'm supposed to also say their real names as well. I mean, I've, I've already told my former editor about this back in April 2015 about that. So anyways, sorry for your inconvenience though for mentioning your real name in this video. So anyways, um, now that I got that out of the way, um, I've got something else that I need to address with the people. Now, ever since when I revealed back last summer about of how that I'm going to be doing a public apologies editorial, I noticed that a lot of you people tend to keep asking me the same question all over and over and over again. And I'm, and I bet you're all wondering, what am I going to apologize for? Now, in response to that question that I'm pretty sure a lot of you people have been trying to ask me, heck, my former editor, Azuchi Guardian, used to ask me about that all the time. So anyways, in response to that question, um... I'm basically apologizing for all the mistakes that I admittingly made when making the Epic Battles movies. Well, technically there are two big mistakes in particular that I've been most ashamed about and I'm willing to apologize for. Well, those two mistakes in particular, there, and yes, Epic Battles fans, there were two mistakes I admittingly made that angered a lot of people and get people to think about the bad parts about epic battles instead of the good parts about it, like what happened similar to like what already happened with the Disney Directed Video sequels, with the Return of Jafar, considering the fact that they did not bring back Robin Williams who reprised his role as the genie and said brought in and Dan Kisilnetta, as well as what already happened with all with with all the Doctor Seuss movies with the live action Can the Hand movie relying so much on adult humor, and, um, the Star Wars prequels, all thanks to the existence of Jar Jar Binks. So anyways, in case you guys are wondering, what the fridge did I do wrong when making the Epic Bass movies? Well, I'm going to explain about those two mistakes right now that, and that got a lot of people all wild up. The first one being, of course, um... Including the first one being of the the first thing about epic battles that has angered a lot of people would be of course the 
the use of Waka Flocka songs. Yeah, I know, a lot of the people tend to get offended, can easily get offended when it comes to Waka Flocka. Heck, I never intended to include any Waka Flocka songs in the first place, period. I mean, um, at least bear with, so, um, and also, um, when I did, but then, uh, but then falling to a controversy I did get regard to the use of Waka Flocka songs, this is the moment where I decided that when making the sequels as well as the TV series, we try to stick with, to using only songs that I know both kids and adults and all enjoy. In other words, songs are either clean or instrumental. And thank God I did not include any Rebecca Black songs in, in any Epic Battles soundtracks whatsoever. So anyways, um... So yeah, not a, When making the sequels, I try to make sure that not only all the songs appear to be either clean or instrumental, but also just try to make sure that all the jokes appear to be clean. So when it comes to make tossing out jokes originated and any pop culture references made from more adult things like Family Guy, South Park, Robot Chicken, um, anything from Adult Swim, anything from Comedy Central, Epic Rap Battles of History, Smosh, um, The Nostalgia Critic, The Angry Video Game Nerd, or basically just anyone as affiliated with either That Guy with the Glasses or Channel Awesome or Cinemassacre or South South Jersey Sam, Schindler's List, Die Hard, Borat, um, oh, right, um, Pulp Fiction, or basically, um, just any of that stuff, or basically just any of Ralph Bakshi's works, or Grand Theft Auto, or Bioshock, or any, or Fallout, or Metal Gear Solid, or Halo, or or Metal Gear Solid, or basically just anything that involves adult material, basically I'd have to make sure I get to use based on what it's called Disneyfication. Now, for those who don't know what Disneyfication is, it's basically where if you take a joke, or basically take something that's made more for adults and make it, make it more kid-friendly, that counts as Disneyfication. Now let me explain what I mean, if that wasn't enough. Um, uh, one good example of that would be, of course, um, in Disney's The Little Mermaid, we do not see Ariel die whatsoever. Whereas in the original book by Hans Christian Andersen, we do see Ariel die. Look, I know, shocking, but it's a fact right here. From what I've seen from those who have obviously read the original book, it was originally based off of. Anyways, another prime example of Disneyfication would be, of course, Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Not only do they make Quasimodo happy, but also, um, they made the ending appear to be so. Ha but also, they've given a happy ending, spoiler, and, um, whereas in the original book, there is no happiness in the original book by Victor Hugo. And um, also, um, another good example of Disneyfication would be, of course, um, what was I thinking? Oh, right. In Disney Sleeping Beauty, we do not see any nudity appear whatsoever. Whereas in the original fairy tale, we do. Though there have been at least some adaptations of it of Sleeping Beauty that do have nudity. Heck, there's one that I did see on Netflix one time that also does have nudity as well. No joke, people, but it's a fact right here. So anyways, um, another, prime ex another good example of Disneyfication would be, of course, in Don, in Don Bluth's Anastasia, they made Anastasia actually survive. Whereas in real life, we never see Anastasia sur survive and instead actually die, unfortunately. So yeah, um, and also, um, the, the, what also got me discouraged to use any Waka Flock songs, it's not just because of all the hate I got, but also, 
the hate that, that I would always get freezing Waka Flocka songs in Epic Bass would later on influence another crossover movie. What movie is that? Let's just say it, it, it's Pixels, which I find to be okay at best. Not as good as Wreck It Ralph, but I will say this at least it's way better than Food Fight in a way. Now, let me explain what I mean, alright? I mean, I mean, I can understand why it would flop at the box office. The reason for Pixels being a box office failure is because I wouldn't really blame it on the, the video game characters appearing in Pixels, as when you do get to see any familiar video game characters appearing in Pixels, they look just exactly like how they are in the actual games they're originally from. Like, for example, when Donkey Kong appeared in Pixels, he looks just like how he was in the original arcade game from back in 1981. And when Pac-Man appeared in Pixels, Pac-Man still looks exactly like in the original game, rather than what you see coming from the TV series that's, that's currently airing on Disney XD. Anyways, when Cube when they use Q-Bird for pixels, um, Q-Bird still looks exactly like, just like how he was when he was in Wreck-It Ralph. So yeah, the only, there are only, the only two reasons why pixels would flop is because, one, considering the fact that it does star Adam Sandler, though, in case you guys want to hear what my honest opinion about Adam Sandler is, I find him just okay at best. Not the greatest actor to exist out there, so my favorite Adam Sandler film would be a toss-up between all the animated films that he's in, which consists of Eight Crazy Nights, Hotel Transylvania, and, and I've yet to see its sequel, Hotel Transylvania 2, as well as my personal favorite live-action movie that Adam Sandler star did would be The Benchwarmers. I know I'm cheating since he didn't really star in The Benchwarmers, but he did somehow help produce The Benchwarmers. So anyways, um... The reason for Pixels being a box office failure, it's not just because of Adam Sandler whom we should blame on, but also it's because due to the fact that they did have Waka Flocka music playing in the soundtrack as well. One song that he did that was in Pixels would be Game On, which I will say, out of all the songs that, that Waka Flocka did, Game On just gotta be his least awful song in my opinion. I mean, sure it may not be as good as what Smooth E has the written as well as the songs from Eminem, nor is it as good as our truth nor any songs from Nice Peter Epic Lloyd. You know, Epic... Not, I will admit, Game On is definitely not as good as Epic Rap Battles of History. It's not as good as This Raps for Hire. I can also admit it's not as good as, um, Gangnam Style, nor is it as good as, um, Super Junior T either. I, so I do find Game On to be way better than all of Waka Flocka's other songs. Now, the reason I don't listen to Waka Flocka music is basically the same exact reason why Rowdy C from TV Trash doesn't watch a lot of South Park, which I can totally respect. So anyways, um, yeah, and also... And also, another, and also, the, the second thing that, that a lot of people have given me hate about regarding to epic battles would be, of course, um, My Little Pony. Now, I've known people who disliked it, and I've known people who've liked it. So, when it comes to My Little Pony, um, like with Waka Flocka, I never intended to include any references to My Little Pony either, as I'm, as yes people, I'm fully aware of the fact that My Little Pony is supposed to be a TV show that's made for little girls. And, um, what, do you know what I mean deep down about the, the idea of the use of My Little Pony characters? I mean, is, uh, I've been getting a lot of hate of the use of My Little Pony characters. My former editor, Azuchi Guardian, used to to say hateful things about Made Me Brony, saying that I'm not a real brony, which I actually am. I became a brony because of that personal reason. 
Now keep in mind, people, that if you think that I would be the kind of bunny who would ever make someone my, make someone like My Little Pony, it's not me. Well, well, people, it's not me that you're looking for at all. Now let me explain what I mean for once. All right. When when Animat did a video where he examines a, on whether or not he's a brony, which which is where I first heard the term from. When he when it turns out that when he when he revealed that a lot of his friends were trying to make him become My Little Pony, and revealed that he does not like My Little Pony, I was not one of those bronies who would ever make who would ever dare make Animat like My Little Pony. I mean, if he, if he said he doesn't like it, I can totally respect that. Heck, when Jaime Tu did a video where, um, where he makes it clear with his audiences that he's not a brony, um, he, um, he, Jaime Tu, um, did, however, um, well, I'm, I'm trying to say right here, people, is that when Jaime Tu did a video where he where he makes it clear with everyone that he's not a brony. Um, again, like what happened with Anman as well as again with Suzuki Guardian. I I I have never I never had any intentions to make Hami to the brony either. Heck, when it comes to something like My Little Pony, I don't make I don't force. I'm not the kind of person who would ever force someone to like My Little Pony. Now if it's that now I'm just gonna say this that Animat, Hami to Azuchi Guardian, if you three are all watching this, if it's that you all don't like My Little Pony, I can respect how you all feel. I'm not gonna hold it against you. You guys have all the all have the right to say that you don't like My Little Pony. So anyway, so yeah, um, so yeah, um, keep now keep in mind, whoever made me, um. Include My Little Pony characters in to the epic battle sequels. I'm just gonna say this: that why would you make me include My Little Pony characters in epic battles? Because My Little Pony is supposed to be made for little girls, whereas epic battles, on the other hand, is supposed to be made only for characters that are more family friendly. That only is supposed to be for which only family oriented characters can be a part of. Now, look, people. I know in the past I may have. Include some babyish things like the Hundred Acre Wood from Winnie the Pooh, various Dr. Seuss characters in Worlds and Foods, as well as as well as some characters from Rock Doodle and Thumbelina, as well as as well as Maid Jane which from Return to Neverland play a bigger role, as well as feature various characters from the Star Wars prequels as well. Well, that's because, people, when you guys take a look at something like Winnie the Pooh, Dr. Seuss, the 90s Don Bluth movies, the Disney directed video sequels, at least with Return to Neverland in that case, as well as the Star Wars prequels, they all have something which not only kids can enjoy, but also adults can enjoy them too. With Winnie the Pooh, just like, any other, just like every other animated Disney movie, you can ever think you guys can ever think of, with the exceptions of cars and planes, they would try to make it more family oriented in that case. Um well when it comes to Winnie the Pooh, um it does however have not just kids enjoying it, but also adults too. Heck, as a kid I used to I used to watch it when I as a kid I love Winnie the Pooh a lot, I will say. And I, even as an adult, I still have an appreciation for Winnie the Pooh. As a kid, not only did I get to watch some of the movies, but also watch some of the TV, watch the TV shows of the character, as well as played some of the games as well. Though when it comes to including Winnie the Pooh in epic battles, and the reason why I would ever consider including the Hundred Acre Wood in Tepic Battles is the fact that, well, um... Well, the theatrical Pooh films um, is the fact that Winnie the Pooh does contain things that kids and adults can all enjoy. Like, for example, at least with the theatrical Pooh movies, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking, of course, like, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, The Tigger Movie, Piglet's Big Movie, 
Pusefula movie and the 2011 movie, the Pooh movie. Anyways, at least with the theatrical Pooh movies, at least they have something which both kids and adults can all enjoy. Heck, Daniel English, a.k.a. Danny the Critic, or Danny Looney Tooney, or Danny Tunglish, even said in his top ten animated movies just for kids countdown that, um, that the theatrical Pooh movies do have some things which both kids and adults can all enjoy. For those who don't know what that top ten list is, um, basically, um, it basically it's a ripoff of Animax's top ten worst films based on a cartoon. So anyways, and the reason why I would ever include characters from Dr. Seuss in Tepic Battles is the fact that, well, like Winnie the Pooh, not only did it play a bigger role in my childhood, but also, plus, it had some endearing, it had some really good morals in which both kids and adults can all take. And, however, when including Seuss and Tepic Battles, there were five Dr. Seuss books that I would borrow elements from in, for the first movie. The first one being, of course, The Can the Hat, as, um, as that book is a Seuss classic. classic. Without The Can the Hat, um, Dr. Seuss would not be that popular. I mean, it's been, I mean, that book is so, is so great that, that not only would he appear in epic battles, but also he would, Get a book sequel called The Cat That Comes Back. He would also appear in the book I Can Read With My Eyes Shut, and he would also get a songbook as well as, um, he would also appear in Daisy Head Maisie, not just the book of it, but also in the TV special of it as well. He was also in, um, he was also, he also got a TV special adaptation of it, and he also got, um, he also got to appear as a, as the narrator and host in Dr. Seuss on the Loose, and he also appeared in the, in a crossover TV special called The Cat That Knows a Lot About That, and he was also in the TV special Kids for Character and got his own theme park ride at his own theme park ride at Universal Studios, and he also even got two movie adaptations. The first one being, of course. A live action movie that's po that's poorly reviewed, which I take as a guilty pleasure, and the second one being, of course, a computer animated film that coming that'll be coming out soon, as well as it's, it also even got a TV series called The Ken that knows a lot about that, and also it had a it also got a series of books called The Ken that knows a lot about that, and also um it also had um four video game adaptations as well, including. One for the PC, which, which, which in this case, which, which, in this, which in this case would be, it would, which in this case it got a Living Books game, which, if you guys own a Windows computer, you, your, your cat and hat game would have been Living Books. Or unless if you guys own a Mac computer, you, your cat and the hat computer game would, would have been by software MacKeith. And and then there is also one a video game based on the movie which which came out on the PlayStation 2, original Xbox, PC, and Game Boy Advance. And then there's also and also there's also another Cat in the Hat video game, which in this case was done by New Kid Co., which in this case came out on the original PlayStation and Game Boy Advance. And also um. The Ken that also even appeared in Dr. Seuss Preschool and in Dr. Seuss Kindergarten. And he also even got an Ocean House Media game. He even got a game that's made for smartphones and tablets, which is made by Ocean House Media. And what do I think about Ocean House Media, me may I ask? Well, the, Ken, the Ocean House Media adaptation of it, well, let's just say it sucks balls. That's all I have to say, people, about Ocean House media, Ocean House media games. I mean, that game should have been made by Wonderful instead. So anyways, um, and also the second Dr. Seuss book I would also use for epic elements from in Epic Battles would be, of course, Green Eggs and Ham. Like the cat in the hat, Green Eggs and Ham would also be another childhood classic as well. 
And because of how great the book is, not only did we get a segment of it in a segment adaptation of it as seen in Dr. Seuss on the Loose, which would also retell to other Seuss stories consisting of the Sneetches and the Lorax, but I mean I mean not not the Lorax, I'm sorry, I mean the Sneetches and the Zax, I meant. But also, um and also it got a living like the cat in the hat, Green Egg Zam would also get a living books game of it, as well as a game Boy, as well as a Game Boy Advance game of it, done by none other than New Kid Co. And um almost forgot to mention that the Cat in the Hat also got a parody of it on Animaniacs. And it also even got a parody of it on The Simpsons. And um for Green Eggs and Ham, um it also got a parody of it through SpongeBob SquarePants, and um, and like the Cat in the Hat, Green Eggs and Ham would also um, get a game, an an app game, a game app made by Ocean House and Media, which again sucks balls, and that's all I have to say about it. So, anyways, um, and the third Doctor Seuss book I'd also borrow elements from would be How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Because of how great the book of How the Grinch Stole Christmas is, not, not like with Cat and Green Eggs and Ham, not only did that not only did that lead some characters to appear in of, of, from the book to appear in Epic Best, but also but also we would see a TV see How the Grinch Stole Christmas get a TV special of it, which has been proclaimed to be an animated Christmas classic, an animated classic which would be proclaimed to be one of those holiday specials that will be worth watching during the Christmas season, alongside with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Frosty the Snowman, and The Year Without a Santa Claus, or basically just any of the Christmas specials that Rankin Bass did. So anyways, um, and then we would all, but then after we would see, um, Chuck Jones do his adaptation of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, which would feature... Boris Karloff, not just narrating, but also voicing the Grinch. We would also get two more TV specials featuring the character consisting of Halloween is Grinch Night and The Grinch Grinch is the Cat in the Hat. And also, um, we would also see a live-action movie adaptation of it, which, which did earn, which ended up being a major success at the box office, but unfortunately did get mixed reviews from critics and fans of the original book. However, um, there's also going to be another computer animated movie adaptation of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, which which will come out in 2017. Can't wait for that. So anyways, I'm going to also, um, the Grinch would also make a cameo in Dr. Seuss's ABC. I'm talking about the Living Books game in that case. And, um, also, we would also see the Grinch get two video game adaptations consisting of one that ties in with the movie which came out on the original PlayStation, the Sega Dreamcast, PC, and Game Boy Color, and the second one being exclusively released on the Nintendo DS. So anyways, um, and the fourth Doctor's, and also, I almost forgot that How the Grinch Stole Christmas also has a game app of it based on the book which would, which would be made by Ocean House Media. What do I think? What do I think about Ocean House Media's adaptation of How the Grinch Stole Christmas? It sucks balls. That's all I'm gonna say. So, anyways, now the fourth ever Doctor Seuss book I would ever include, that would also bar I'm going to into Epic Bells will be, of course, Horton Hears Who slash Horton Hatches the Egg, as they both do feature Horton the Elephant appearing as the main character. So yeah, when it comes to Horton, here's a who and Horton has his dig. Both have been major childhood classics. Um, because of what a great success both of those two books have been, this is why. Well, for Horton has his, uh, by the I almost forgot to say this, people that How the Grinch Stole Christmas also got a lot of parodies of it, like in SpongeBob SquarePants, The Fairly Odd Parents, The Simpsons, Family Guy, Robot Chicken. My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, and and Glee, and many others as well. 
So anyways, um, moving on to our senior <laughs> So anyways, um, due to what a great success, or what, how, what great of a book Horton has the egg has been, this is why we would get an animated short of it being done by Mary Melodies. And because of how great a Horton years of Who is, this is why we would all get, um, a TV special of that as well as a computer animated movie adaptation for that was so good, as well as, um, we've also gotten, um, a computer game sequel called Dr. Seuss Preschool. Yeah, the, the reason I called it a sequel is due to the fact that, well, you know the sour kangaroo? When she appeared in Dr. Seuss Preschool, she's not as mean as how she was in the original story of it. And also, um... And also, um, so yeah, and also, um, when I say Dr. Seuss Preschool would be considered as a sequel to Horton Yazoo, think of like, you know, you know like how Disney's Peter Pan, The Legend of Neverland, was to Return to Neverland, as well as how the Inside Out plays it from Disney Infinity 3.0 is to Inside Out. Think of it like that, people. So anyways, um, and then, there's also, um, and then, and then the fifth Doctor Seuss book I would use elements from for epic battles would be, of course, the Lorax. Because of how great of a classic the book, the Lorax is, this is why we would get a TV special adaptation of it, as well as um, it also even got a computer animated movie of it, which would say which guys won about Illuminations adaptation of the Lorax, but I don't find it as bad as what most people say they would be, and also, um, and also, it even appeared in, the works would also even appear in Dr. Seuss Kindergarten. Wow, they almost forgot to point out about Winnie the Pooh, is that another good reason for me to use Winnie the Pooh for, for epic battles is all thanks to the fact that it would feature, um, that, that is the fact that, well, it, and Winnie the Pooh has been featured in other crossover franchises that Disney created, at least two in particular, consisting of The House of Mouse and Kingdom Hearts. And the reason why I would ever consider um, using characters from Rock uh, Doodle and Dumble, uh, some, some, some 90s Booth movies, for those who don't know what I'm talking about here, I'm talking about films like Rockadoodle and Thumbelina and Anastasia and Titan A.E. In, in particular, to be to be more precise. Anyways, the reason why we have Chana Claire from Rockadoodle play a bigger role is the fact that, well, um, is the fact, well, no matter how much you guys hate Rockadoodle, there is one interesting fact that a lot of you Disney fans and Don Booth fans watching this all need to know. Did you guys know that Rockadoodle was originally supposed to be worked on at Disney? Well, let me explain what I mean. Well, the idea of making a movie featuring the character Chanclair goes way back in the late 30s. However, due to the fact that it appears to be... But then, for some reason, this is where Walt Disney would then... Just the idea of a movie... To make a movie... Just the idea of making a movie based off Chanclair and Reynard the Fox. But then, um... Fast forwarding in 1982 when... When Don Bluth just finished making The Secret of Nim, Bluth, Goldman, and Pomeroy all decided that they would bring back the idea of making a movie based off of Chanticleer. However, unfortunately, there was a bankruptcy that screwed them all up. So then, so then after Bluth and the gang all have seen Who, who Framed Roger Rabbit, this is where they decided to make Rockadoodle like, traditional animation. So, make it as a traditional animation slash live action hybrid. Originally they were supposed the li originally the live action scenes were supposed to be directed by Victor French, but then he had to leave the project as he did pass away due to terminal lung cancer for smoking a lot. So thus Booth had no choice but to film both all the animated scenes and the live action scenes. I mean I can understand why it's hard to do something like that. So anyways, so yeah, the reason why I would ever include some characters from Thumbelina and Tepic Battles, I meant as in, we're talking about Don Bluth's 
Thumbelina is the fact that, well, um, in spite of all the hate it got, and in spite what a box office failure it was, just like what happened with Rockadoodle, um, there are actually people who, who actually like the film, like myself. Two animation critics in particular, with particularly with Animan and Huey Tunmore, they both actually like the film, whether you guys believe it or not. I'm not joking, people. Both Animat and Huey Tumor both actually like the film. And if you guys really, really do not believe me, well, the links are down in the description below. So anyways, the reason why I would ever make Jane from Return to Neverland play a bigger role in epic battles is the fact that, well, um... Is, all, is because, because due to the fact of how, um... In spite of all the hate she has gotten, there, there, she has garnered at least some love in a way. Now let me explain what I mean. When it comes to the character Jane, she's basically one of those sequel characters that have gotten a lot of love. I'm, I'm not only that, but also plus um, another good reason why I would ever consider making Jane play a big role in, in epic battles is the fact that well um. <laughs> Well, the movie Return to Neverland, um, well, did end up being a box office success, but unfortunately, got mixed reviews from critics, similar to what already happened with Ron Howard's aggression eliminations, the Lorax. So anyways, um, what also got me to include Jane in Epic Battles, it's not just because of my love for the character, it's also because, well, there are people out there who are passionate about that character, so much so that I even see, I've even seen some fan art based off of her appearing on DeviantArt, as well as some fan fiction being written based on the character. And plus, fun fact, Return to Neverland also appeared in the book The Gospel According to Disney. Not only was Return to Neverland the only film, Disney film, not part of the Walt Disney Animated Canon to appear in the book The, the Gospel According to Disney, but also, it was the only film from Disney Toon Studios to appear in the Gospel According to Disney, and it's also, it was also the only Disney sequel to ever appear in the book, The Gospel According to Disney. Whereas all the other Disney films that you would see appear in The Gospel According to Disney are just nothing but films that are part of the Walt Disney Animated Canon released all the way up to Brother Bear, that is. So anyways, um, the reason why I would ever includes several characters from the Star Wars prequels is the fact that, well, there are people in, out there who really enjoy the prequels like myself. Um, though I'm fully aware of the fact that mo most Star Wars fans would prefer the originals. Which is why, um, when speaking about outside the characters, um, most outside the main characters, most of the elements um, that would play a big role in epic battles. When I say elements, we're talking about like organizations and um, and planets. Um, the ones that get a lot of screen time are mainly from the original trilogy. I guess most likely because of the fact that well, I just wanted to welcome fans of the original trilogy, as I'm fully aware of the fact that most people think that the originals are better than the prequels, and which I can totally respect. So I've had at least some prequel characters, Star Wars prequel trilogy characters play a big role. However, one element from the prequels that I did use a lot of would be, of course, the midi-chlorians. Now, for those who don't know what a midi-chlorian is, it's basically those things which Jedi would normally have. Without midi-chlorians, Jediism would not exist in the first place. So anyways, um... Also, um, so yeah, um, how can, is there anything else that I forgot about? Oh, by the way, I do have some great news that I'd like to be able to share with you guys as well. Another great news. It's nothing personal, people. It's just that, well, um, in case you guys have not watched any of Azuchi's recent videos, thankfully, not only did he already stop bullying me on the internet, 
but also he stopped bullying my new editor, Nick, as well. And I didn't, and in case you guys have not seen my update vlog from last month, um, I already made it clear with you got with all of you people about of how that you guys should consider give Nick a second chance. As Nick, from what I've seen, he's a brilliant editor, and um, I can tell you all for a fact that you would have all loved his uh, his uh, him as an editor. As as he really listened, he's been listening to me, and 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 he's a really good video maker, and he's very trustworthy, I will say. So, um, anything else I forgot about? Um, well, I guess it's about all I have to say to you people. Um, I hope you all have a happy Columbus Day today. And I hope you all, <clears throat> I hope you all have uh, happy Halloween! <laughs> <laughs>